going to see Stephen Anderson covering up for the Roman Catholic Church. First, he denies that the Romans ever, you know, persecute Christians in the New Testament. And then he comes out and he actually covers up for the Nazis and says that they had nothing to do with Catholicism. The Nazis weren't Catholics. They were just evolutionists, you know, and stuff like that. Let's watch this. That's because if you read the book of Acts, the Jews are always the ones persecuting the Christians. In fact, as you read the entire book of Acts, you'll never find the Romans persecuting the Christians one time in that book. But over and over again, it is always the Jews who persecute the Christians. Okay. He says that it's always the Jews, it's always the Jews, you know, that are persecuting the Christians. Let's see about that. Acts chapter 19. See, there's 20. This is chapter 19. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana. I don't think Jews were doing that. Brought no small gain unto the craftsmen, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation, and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but almost throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands, so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised and her magnificence should be destroyed, of whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Okay, Diana is just another name for Astarte or Shingmu or, or uh, all these different names that now they call Mary in Catholicism, the Virgin Mary. Ancient Semiramis, the Queen of Heaven, okay, the Queen of Heaven, excuse me, in the book of Jeremiah. It's Roman Catholicism. Right there you have it, worshiping idols. This, these people weren't Jews, and they, yes, they did persecute the early Christians there. And there are many other examples as well. And how about the, the facts of history? Uh, the, what was the Nero, the Roman emperor, that was burning Christians at the stake? torturing Christians back in the first century. Oh, but it, it wasn't Rome. Rome didn't hurt Christians. It was those evil Jews again. Let's continue. Let's watch another video here on this. We as believers in Christ are today the, the people that we have replaced the physical nation of Israel as being the holy nation. We have replaced the Old Testament nation of Israel as being the people of God. So there you go. That was uh, Israel moment number nine. And he says two times, we have replaced the nation of Israel. Replacement theology. Just as plain as day, right in your face. It's what Roman Catholicism has always been the one that has taught replacement theology. That's why they had the Crusades. That's why they went out and they murdered and killed Jews for centuries. They let the Jews get wealthy and get a lot of money and things and possessions. And then the Catholics come in. They have a crusade, a holy crusade for the church. And they come in and kill the Jews and take their land and their riches. That's what they did in Nazi Germany. That's what's coming to America. And you have these heretics like Stephen Anderson that are promoting this thing and getting the body of Christ to turn on the Jews. Let's watch this one. Israel moment number 14. And given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Now, what I've been teaching in this series, a lot of people will call it replacement theology. And they'll say, you know, you're teaching replacement theology. Well, here's the thing. Isn't this replacement? If the kingdom of God's taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof, you've been replaced. You were the people of God. You were that holy nation of the Old Testament. But now you've been replaced. And today, the physical nation of Israel has been replaced by believers, by a holy nation made up of all believers in Christ, whether they be Jew or Gentile, no matter what the nationality, we who believe in Christ in the New Testament are the holy nation. Stephen Anderson, you are a dirty papist. That's what you are. You are teaching, he openly just said, replacement theology. Many people call this replacement theology. You know, many people call this replacement theology. The little nervous thing there. Oh well, yeah, that's what it says. It's they've been replaced. 
Israel moment number 38. Let's watch this one. But a lot of people will say, no, no, no. It's those who believe in replacement theology. They're the synagogue of Satan because they're saying that they're Jews and they're not. But here's the difference. We're not blaspheming Christ. He said, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Okay, the blasphemy there is those people that are saying that they're Jews and they're not. It's not saying that they're blaspheming Christ. They are, the blasphemy is they're saying that they are Jews and they are not. Now you see, a person who is born Jewish can say, I'm a Jew. All right, They can say that. And it's true. Whether they believe in Judaism or not, they are a Jew according to the flesh. The Bible says it over and over and over again. Jews according to the flesh. So somebody that says they're Jewish and they're worshiping in a synagogue and things like that, how could they be the synagogue of Satan? They are a Jew. They're not lying about that. And you have somebody that converts to Judaism. They're saying they're a Jew. That works for them too. What's going on there is when people say replacement theology, we're the Jews now. We've replaced the Jews. The other, those people, the physical Jews after the flesh, to whom pertain the promises and the covenants and everything, those people there, they're not the Jews anymore. That's the synagogue of Satan right there. Again, Anderson defending replacement theology. He's a Catholic. Now let's watch this. So to pin the Holocaust on Christianity is ridiculous. It's a lie. Okay, to pin the Holocaust on Christianity is a lie. It's ridiculous. You know, and see, you know, Christianity there is, is there, you know, the claim is Catholicism is Christianity. Let me show you another clip here. And last of all, they say, oh, the Holocaust, that was, the, that was Christianity that did that. No, that was evolution and eugenics and, and Darwinian theory that did that. Adolf Hitler was not, people say Adolf Hitler was Catholic. He was Catholic like all kinds of people you know say I'm Catholic, but they never go to church, don't believe in it. They think just because they're baptized. Hitler did not believe in any type of Christianity. He was of Darwin and atheism. Hitler did not believe in any type of Christianity. Okay. Let me just find a... Hitler was a... Not a real Catholic. He was just kind of a fake Catholic. All right. How about this quote right here? I fell down on my knees and thanked heaven from an overflowing heart for granting me the good fortune of being permitted to live at this time. Sounds like something a uh, Christian would say. By the living God there. You say, uh, what is this? Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler. This planet will, as it did thousands of years, there, you know, that says, Hence today I believe that I am acting in accordance with the will of the Almighty Creator. By defending myself against the Jew, I am fighting for the work of the Lord. Right there. Interesting, it was changed to millions in the second edition. But right there. Defending himself against the Jew, Hitler says, I am fighting for the work of the Lord. That's what Stephen Anderson believes. People get all upset, you know. You shouldn't call Pastor Stephen Anderson a Nazi. He's your brother in Christ. Anderson's not my brother in Christ. Okay? I'm not a Catholic. Anderson is. But, you know, Hitler never talked like a Christian. He never said anything about Christianity. How about this one? This is page 307. His life is only of this world, and his spirit is inwardly as alien. He's talking about the Jew to Christianity as his nature 2,000 years previous was to the great founder of the new doctrine. Of course, the latter made no secret of his attitude toward the Jewish people, and when necessary, he even took to the whip to drive from the temple of the Lord, the, this adversary of all humanity. You know, and then it talks about in return Christ was nailed to the cross. In Hitler's book, that he's, that's most, his most famous thing that Hitler is known for, you ask anybody, it would be Mein Kampf. It wouldn't be the propaganda films that the Nazis put out. This is the book. And Anderson said, oh, well, there's nothing really about, you know, Hitler talking about Christianity or the name of Christ isn't even mentioned or anything. 
He's lying to you. I'm proving it. Check this one out. Page 432. In this, the Catholic Church can be regarded as a model example. Oh, really? From this arises the amazing youthfulness of this gigantic organism, its spiritual suppleness and iron will power. Hitler's talking about the Catholic Church. Oh, but he was just a, a nominal Catholic, just, just baptized. He, he wasn't a practicing Catholic. How about this one? Page 459 of Mein Kampf. Here, too, we can learn by the example of the Catholic Church. Not Darwin, not evolution, not eugenics. The Catholic Church. Why would Anderson cover this stuff up? Unless he himself is a Catholic. Check this one out. Here we have page... Uh, 564 of Mein Kampf. The most devout Protestant could sit beside the most devout Catholic without coming into the slightest conflict with his religious convictions. Very true. Very true. Most Protestants are just Catholics. You know, you have uh, Catholicism or you have Protestantism, kind of like, uh, you know, regular beer versus light beer. It's both beer, both alcohol. But I just want to show you something here. Very, very interesting when it comes to this thing of propaganda. Right? Many people have heard this thing about Adolf Hitler. If you tell a lie long enough, loud enough, often enough, people will believe it. I don't know if that is actually attributed to Adolf Hitler, but I'm going to show you the real quotes where he talks about how to get propaganda through to people. All right? And this is exactly what Stephen Anderson is doing. This is, this is Stephen Anderson. Look at this. Here we have page 184 of Mein Kampf. But the most brilliant propagandist technique will yield no success unless one fundamental principle is born in mind constantly and with unflagging attention. It must confine itself to a few points and repeat them over and over. Here, as so often in this world, persistence is the first and most important requirement for success. Persistence. Right there. This is the proof that this, this right here is what Anderson is doing and his little post-trib replacement theology heretic buddies. They all do this thing. There is no mention of the rapture before 1830. There's no mention of the rapture before 1830. John Nelson Darby, John Nelson Darby, 1830, first mention of the rapture. It's a lie. It's been disproved so many times. The Shepherd of Hermes, okay, an, an apocryphal or a, you know, apocryphal book written couple hundred years after the Bible is finished, you know, way before 1830, and it mentions the rapture. Different other guys, you know, church fathers and things, mention the rapture. Council of Ephesus, 430 AD, condemned the premillennial pre-trib rapture system. It's been proven over and over and over and over again that this lie that these people keep, this propaganda campaign of the Vatican coming out and saying 1830, 1830, 1830, it was John Nelson Darby and he got it from a Jesuit. Okay, to all you post-tribbers out there, I'm going to offer a challenge to you. Show me one place in the Catholic Catechism, one time, one place where it says pre-trib rapture. Show me one place where the Catholics teach a pre-trib rapture in the Catholic Catechism. Any edition, any year, show me one place. I can show you, and I already have shown it on camera, that they teach a post-trib rapture. They teach that they, well, I shouldn't say rapture, but they teach the church, the faithful, goes through this final time of purification. I've proved it on camera. Show me one place where the Catholics, if they were the ones behind the pre-trib rapture with the Jesuit Ribeiro or whatever the guy's name was, Show me one place where the catechism says pre-trib rapture. Show me one. And when you can't prove it, and you can't, then quit this stinking propaganda war of 1830 being the first time the rapture is mentioned. You get so sick and tired of that. They just vomit it out all the time, all the time. 1830, 1830, 1830, 1830. Propaganda perfected by Hitler, 
practiced by post-tribbers and replacement theology heretics. Page 185. Look at this. The purpose of propaganda is not to provide interesting distraction for blasé young gentlemen, but to convince, and what I mean to, is to convince the masses. But the masses are slow moving, and they always require a certain time before they are ready even to notice a thing, and only after the simplest ideas are repeated thousands of times will the masses finally remember them. One more quote here on the same page. At first, the claims of the propaganda were so impudent that people thought it insane. Like saying that the body of Christ would have to go through the, the time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation, you know. Now, that's insane. That's crazy. How can Jesus Christ be in heaven opening the seals and unleashing the Antichrist and war and famine, death, hell, all this stuff? How can he be doing that when he, you know, we are members of his body? So he's opening the seals on himself, pouring out wrath and judgment on himself. It's insane, you see. Later, it got on people's nerves. And in the end, it was believed. Years ago, these post-trib nuts were coming out and nobody believed them. They were just like, oh, whatever. Oh yeah, the body of Christ is going to go through it. How can Christians that are sealed under the day of redemption go through a time when you can take the mark of the beast and lose your salvation? Huh? How does that work? How does that work? How is it, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way, and then shall that wicked be revealed? The body of Christ is prohibiting, letting, hindering, whatever you want to say there, it's letting is the King James word, but it means hindering. We are hindering, letting, the Antichrist from showing up. And you say, what? But Matthew chapter 24 is teaching the rapture. Really? Okay. I'll give you, I'm not going to bet any money, but please show me, any of you post tribber nuts, please show me one place where dead saints are raised in Matthew chapter 24. Just one. Okay? Dead saints. You see, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the dead in Christ rise first, and then we which are alive and remain call up together with them in the clouds. Show me that one in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21. Show me it. Quit your yapping about John Nelson Darby, 1830. John Nelson Darby, 1830. John Nelson Darby. We got the little propaganda war now, okay? We got it. All you heretics out there. Anderson, Joe Schimmel, uh, Kirk Cameron, all, all, the, all these little sissies now that are coming out. Uh, Sam Adams, you know, all these guys coming out. There is no pre-trib pre rapture. It's a heresy. Yeah, uh-huh. We've proved it over and over again. But proof doesn't ever shake post-tribbers. Again, he said, you know, there's no proof that, that the Vatican was behind Adolf Hitler. There's no proof. There's no Catholic connection. How about this one? Hitler's Pope, The Secret History of Pius the Twelfth by John Cornwell. This guy is a Catholic. He's a Catholic. He's a Roman Catholic. And even he admits that, yes, the Vatican was behind Nazi Germany. Here they are, signing the concordant with the Franz von Papen. Okay? Right there. There's the Pope signing a concordant. There you have Hitler and uh, Archbishop, what is that, uh, Caesar or Sinigo. Okay, the papal nuncio in Berlin during the Nazi era. There you go. Down there. And he admits, freely admits that yes, the Vatican was behind the Nazi party. They absolutely were. You see, I'm still not convinced. How about the Vatican's Holocaust by Avro Manhattan? Speaking about over in Yugoslavia with the Catholic Ustashi. You say, but but it was all just political. It was it was eugenics. It was it wasn't anything, you know, whatever. Here you have uh, all these papists with the. Nazis and things in the, you know, 
these Ustashi in, in Yugoslavia, Greek Orthodox priests being arrested and taken off to the death camps because they wouldn't convert to Catholicism, Orthodox Serbs being forced in mass to convert. Here's a beautiful one here for you, Stephen Anderson. You lying devil, you. A Catholic priest converting a whole village. You know, you ought, to, you ought to get this book. This is a good one for your library if you want your blood to boil. Okay? I mean, this thing is just so, it's, it's so heart-wrenching. It is so disturbing and disgusting. There were Nazis that were coming, Nazi soldiers that were coming to Yugoslavia during this time period here, and they were trying to get war crime charges against these Ustashi guys. It was that bad. It was that brutal. But, you know, oh, the, the, the Vatican didn't have any ties at all to Nazi Germany, and the, 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 those Catholics have been maligned and lied against. You know, the, the Romans weren't persecuting Christians in the first century. That's not true. And, they, and the, you know, the Roman Catholics weren't persecuting Jews in the, in, in the Nazi Germany era. You know, it was just, it was eugenics. It was evolution. <laughs> yeah. Show this picture here. Here you have Catholic priest, Franciscan monk, here actually, Franciscan monk, Father Miroslav Filipovic, priest, officer in the Ustashi. Happened time and time again. And, they, and the, most of these guys got out through the rat line when the whole thing was done, hanging different guys there that weren't Catholics. You know, they love to do this thing here. They take Orthodox men, stab them in the neck with a, with a knife, and then get the blood out like that. Probably drink it too, I would imagine. Because, hey, why not? If you're a Catholic, you believe in drinking blood for salvation, so why not? Little children starve to death. You know, the pit of death. Shooting people in the back of the head and things. Here you have the monster that was in charge of the Ustashi, Ante Pavlik. Never brought forward for war crime charges. Don't worry, though. He's burning in hell right now, so we do have some consolation. Just seeing if there's any other pictures in here. I mean, it, there's other stuff in here. I can't go through the whole thing, but just incredible. Let me show you one more picture here. There you have the U for the Ustashi. Catholic brothers, priests, and monks when visiting villages to convert the Orthodox population, were always escorted by the heavily armed Catholic stormtroopers, the Ustashi. The terrible reputation of the Ustashi for ruthlessness was often sufficient to persuade people to embrace the Catholic Church, and their bayonets helped the Catholic padres to baptize those who hesitated. The alternative, the preachers warned, was seizure of their property, arrest, concentration camps, or even execution. Stephen Anderson says it's all a lie. There's no such thing as a, as a Catholic conspiracy here. Nothing to see here, folks. No, no, no Catholics. show you another couple of quotes here. This is another good book proving a lot of this stuff that I'm talking about. The Secret History of the Jesuits by Edmund Paris. Look at this one. The Fuhrer had come to power thanks to the votes of the Catholic Zentrum only five years before, but most of the objectives cynically re revealed in Mein Kampf were already realized. This book, an insolent challenge to the Western democracies, was written by the Jesuit Father Stempfli and was and signed by Hitler. For as, for as so many ignore the fact, it was the Society of Jesus which perfected the famous pan-German program as laid out in this book, and the Fuhrer endorsed it. So this thing, if you want to talk about Hitler and Catholicism and stuff, this wasn't even written by Hitler. Written by a Jesuit. The poisonous, satanic filth that went and led to the, the murder and slaughter of over six million, six million Jews. 
absolutely disgusting. Show you another thing here. It's page 163. But let us see first how an especially authorized personality, Franco, Knight of the Order of Christ, expressly confirmed this, the collusion between the Vatican and the Nazis. According to Reforme, this is what the press of the Spanish dictator Franco published on the 3rd of May, 1945, the day of Hitler's death. Quote, Adolf Hitler, son of the Catholic Church, died while defending Christianity. It is therefore understandable that words cannot be found to lament over his death, when so many were found to exalt his life over his mortal remains stands his victorious moral figure with the palm of the martyr, God gives Hitler the laurels of victory. And this goes on, by the way, to talk about the Jesuit order and how Hitler actually was quoted as saying that he based most of his Nazi regime after the Jesuit order. And we already saw, I already showed you the quotes in Mein Kampf where he said, I, I took a lot of inspiration from the Catholic Church. But Stephen Anderson covers that up. Why would that be? He's an independent fundamental Baptist. Yeah, right. Sure he is. Show you another thing here. Here we have the Godfathers. Alberto, part three, put out by Chick Publications. I recommend these things, these Crusaders comic books. They're great. Uh, just really, really filled with a lot of good information. Over again, here we see a lot of the same information we saw before. There you have the concordant being signed. The Pope, Franz van, Franz, Franz van Poppen, there or whatever. This guy here is talking about the, um, I'm going to zoom in here, read some of this. So now the Jesuits had leaders for their three fronts. These men became the defenders of the faith. He wrote that in his magazine, The Reforme, about Hitler when Hitler died. Now the blood was ready to flow. Worldwide, in a new holy war, the Inquisition is underway at last. That's what the Catholics have been doing for years. And here's a picture of uh, Alberto Rivera. If you don't know the story about that, Alberto Rivera was a Jesuit priest who got saved. He was a high-level Jesuit priest. He came out and he told what he had been trained there in the Jesuit order. Very revealing. It says, German Catholics under orders started joining Protestant churches. This was critical to pull off the diabolical plot that would affect the thinking of Jews for decades to come. These undercover Roman Catholics worked hard to gain the acceptance and trust of Protestant pastors and their church members. And when the anti-Jewish atrocities began, these Catholic agents pretending to be Protestants publicly accused the Jews and turned them into the Gestapo for export to the death camps. And so, even today, the Jews believe the Protestants turned them in and that the true Christians are their enemies. And Stephen Anderson is right back to doing the same thing. And so are all the other post-trib replacement theology heretics. They're Catholics. Closet Catholics. And some, I realize some post-tribbers are ignorant and they're just repeating the lies that they've been told. They're not all closet Catholics. They're not all Jesuits or whatever else. I understand that. But you get up into these guys that it will not be corrected. They will not be shown the truth. And they're just lying and lying and lying and, and perpetuating this propaganda of 1830, all that junk. I'm watching out for them guys. And I'm going to expose them. And I have been exposing them for years. They can't answer the stuff I bring out because it's from the Bible. It isn't about me, it's about what the scriptures teach. The Jesuits are masters of deceit. The Vatican took over 1,000 Roman Catholic Jews and hid them under the hill, hills of the Vatican for the duration of the war. Why? Just in case Hitler lost. The Vatican always covers itself in case its plans should backfire. This way they could claim, proclaim to the world that they protected the Jews from Hitler. What a vicious, dirty game. Yeah, that's exactly what they'll do. And uh, show a bunch more things. Just want to say this is another interesting thing you ought to do some research into here. But uh, you say, what was the point of the whole Nazi thing there? You know, obviously the Catholics with replacement theology, they want to kill the Jews. But like I stated earlier, they also want to take the property of the Jews. And here you have this thing of the Blue Army coming in, and they came in to bring in aid, you know, and stuff like this, and they end up taking gold, you know, 
stole a whole bunch of riches and fortune and wealth. And I mean, that, that thing is like legendary now. The Nazis just went in. They were taking stuff out of the museums. They, were, they, they took rich, wealthy Jews' homes from them. And they actually, one of the, the schools, the Adolf Hitler schools, the Adolf Hitler boys, uh, that was, it was housed in a, in a big mansion that used to be owned by Jews. I mean, look that stuff up. There's so many things. I can't get into it all in this study. It's just like they're, they're coming, in, coming in to Germany and stealing the property from the Jews. And a lot of the rich Jews were able to flee, you know, because they had the money to do it. But you have the ones that are poor. They can't leave. They get rounded up and slaughtered into the millions. And that same satanic spirit that the Jesuits had back then in, in Germany, pre-Nazi Germany there, where they were starting to get in, the Catholics infiltrating and saying, you know, the Jews are bad, you know, replace the churches, replace the Jews and everything else. That same satanic spirit now indwells men like Tex Mars, Stephen Anderson, a lot of these guys that are coming out saying, the Jews are no more, we've replaced the Jews. Watch out for these guys. I'm telling you what, they are dangerous, extremely dangerous. But let's, uh, let's watch two more video clips here with Anderson, and then we'll be done with this subject. Now, you say, well, where did Hitler get his ideology from? He didn't get it from the Bible. Newsflash, Hitler was not a Christian. Now, sure, Hitler was baptized Catholic as a baby, just like everybody in Germany virtually is baptized something or other. I mean, the vast majority of people in Germany are either baptized Catholic or baptized Lutheran. It doesn't mean they believe in it. And Hitler was not devout. Hitler was not devout. I just showed you he was. A devout, hardcore Roman Catholic. Why is Anderson covering that fact up? Why is he covering up for Roman Catholicism? You see, Adolf Hitler did, w was hateful of the Jews because he believed in the master race. Remember how he believed in white supremacy? That's what Adolf Hitler believed. So Adolf Hitler believed that the white man, the Aryan man, or the Nordic man, as he called it, was superior, and that the Jews and other Semitic people were inferior. So he wanted to cleanse them of that race. It had nothing to do with religion. It wasn't like the Jews could be given a chance, because here's the thing. The Catholics, when they persecuted Jews in time past, they gave them the opportunity to convert. They said, if you convert away from Judaism, then you'll be fine. Just stop it there for a minute. It wasn't like the Catholics did it, because the Catholics would give people the opportunity to convert, like I showed you. Hitler was not a, uh, at all Catholic. He wasn't at all religious, like I showed you. Like I showed you. And like I showed you, Anderson's lying to you. And so you have all kinds of millions of people in Spain and Portugal who converted from Judaism to Christianity, you know, which is mainly Catholicism, really, okay, which is not a true form of Christianity. But you have a lot of Jews that converted to avoid persecution. But that wasn't an option in, in Nazi Germany. Because the Nazi Germany had nothing to do with religion. It had nothing to do with the New Testament. It had nothing to do with Christianity. There's not one word in those Nazi propaganda films saying, hey, the Jews killed Jesus. Hey, you know, uh, well, we love the New Testament. Nothing. He denies both Old and New Testaments in that film. Okay, here Anderson's talking about a film. You know, and, and there's nothing at all about the New Testament or whatever. Oh, then why did they display a copy of Martin Luther's On the Jews and Their Lies book at the Nuremberg rallies? I wonder why he did that. And why is it that Anderson preached a sermon of the same title? Except it was just the Jews and their lies instead of on the Jews and their lies. And as I showed in another video, Stephen Anderson is promoting On the Jews and Their Lies, the actual book by Martin Luther on Amazon.com. This is a great book. It should be read by everybody. Anderson, Anderson is a fake. He's a liar. He's a Catholic. He's not a Baptist. Yeah, break. He denies the truths of the Old and New Testament in the eternal Jew. Why? Because Nazi Germany, led by Adolf Hitler, was a result of Darwinian evolution. 
Did you see what he just did? Nazi Germany is a result of Darwinian evolution. Now you see in the occult, that's another satanic hand signal. It's three sixes, you see? Do it here on the overhead camera so you can see a little bit better. You see? Six. 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 And you watch Steven Anderson, he'll do it over and over and over again. Let's continue. So if you want to talk about what wicked ideology led up to the Holocaust and what wicked ideology was behind Nazi Germany, I'll tell you exactly what it was. Well, don't pin it on Jesus. Don't pin it on the Apostle Paul. Don't pin it on Christianity. It ought to be pinned on atheism. It ought to be pinned on evolution. Pin that on Charles Darwin. Because Charles Darwin's book is called The Origin of the Species. But if you look at the whole title, if you look at the cover page, it says The Continuance of Favored Races. And in Charles Darwin's book, The Origin of the Species, where he taught evolution, he taught that white man is the most evolved and that brown or black man is less evolved. Look, that is the ideology that Adolf Hitler was operating under. And so the Jews are lying. Every Jew that we talk to, every rabbi blamed the Holocaust on the Christians. Christianity. And I said, well, wait a minute. I thought it was all about race. Well, yeah, but still. Still it was the Christians. But, uh, but did, did Hitler believe in Christ? Well, no. Did they, have a, did they have an option to convert to Christianity? Well, no. Oh, 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 you know. And again, you're just supposed to believe him here that this is what these Jewish rabbis said. Did Hitler believe in Christ? Well, no. Did they, did they have an option to convert to Christianity? Well, no. I just showed you that Hitler believes in Christ, believed in Christ, talked about Christ, was a devout Roman Catholic, and they had options to convert to Catholic, the Greek Orthodox. You say, well, they weren't Jews. They weren't Jews and things like that. Yeah, but I'll tell you right now, if the Jews would have converted to Catholicism, if they would have left and everything, they would have been spared. It's just disgusting to me to see this little lying devil covering up for Catholicism. And some of you dumb thumps out there still think he's saved. And you come down on me because I talk about repentance and a changed life. And the spirit of truth should be there, you know, and things. And I don't, I don't blame somebody that just got saved and they're still doing some dumb things and whatever else. But this guy's been saved, saved for a long time. And he's reproved and he's rebuked and he will not change. Where's the chastisement? The Bible says if ye be without chastisement, then you're a bastard. A bastard is somebody who doesn't know their father. You people better wake up. Good night, man. Bible believers need to join together and stand against this kind of junk. These kind of lying, false prophets. I mean, why, why aren't you getting upset about this either? I mean, I'm trying very hard to control myself from just totally flying off the handle here and just screaming about this thing. You talk about upsetting. Watch some video reels of the Holocaust. Watch some video reels of those dead bodies and think to yourself, that could be my wife there in that pile of dead bodies of women. That could be my brother. That could be my mother. It could be my sister. It could be my daughter. It could be my whatever, best friend. No respect for life at all. And you'll defend the guy and say, well, I th I, I, yeah, Brian, he's, he's off on something, but I still think he's saved. The final time period here before the church age ends is signified by being Laodicean, neither hot nor cold. And the Bible says you make God sick. If you can see this evidence and you still say, I think Stephen Anderson, yes, he's lying, but I still think he's saved. You are lukewarm at best.
disgusting to me.